The earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, 
the world and all who dwell therein. For it is the Lord who founded it upon the sea and molded upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord and who can stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure heart, those who have pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is fraud. Together, they shall receive a blessing from the Lord and a just reward from God of their salvation. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, we come before you in penitence and openness. It is through worship that we learn the deep lessons of life and are armed for the battles of every day. O oh Lord God, keep our souls awake that we may have a clear vision of what you want us to do. Let the wisdom of your will and the loyalty of your love continue to inspire us to worship and serve you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. to confession why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister why do you ignore their needs remember we will all stand before the judgment seat of god so then each of us will be accountable to him let us now see god's forgiveness for our failure to live a life worthy of his calling let us say our prayer confession together. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we have failed to fulfill your will for us. We betray our neighbors and ignore the needs of the people around us. You have bounded yourself to us, but we choose to obey our own will and desire. God, have mercy on us and lead us once more to the table that unites us with you through Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, take this assurance of pardon. Know in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. We are assured that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height and depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. But first, we are assured of God's love and forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Good morning and a blessed Sunday to everyone. Today is 12th Sunday in Kingdom Tide and first Sunday of the month of November. In our church calendar, November is Christian Stewardship Month of one ng Christianong pagkakatiwala. We strongly believe that everything we have and enjoy in this life Everything that sustains life are a trust and a gift from God. And we should be a good and a responsible stewards of what God has entrusted to us. Since today is the first Sunday of November, we also celebrate, uh, we will also celebrate the sacrament of the Holy Communion. And we hope that you already prepared the communion elements at home. The joint evangel and best prayer choir is the one in charge of the music in all our worship services this day. The best prayer choir is faithfully handled by Brother Israel Comandante as a choir conductor, and Sister Emma Madraso Chavez served as the choir accompanist. While the evangel choir is ably handled by Brother G.V. Petran as choir conductor, and Brother Mark Dublin as the accompanies. This morning, liturgies is one of the elders of the church and an elder assigned to the shepherding ministry of the church. We praise and thank God to have Elder Beth Roberto as our liturgist. Her co-liturgist is also one of the elders of the church, Elder Aida Dazalias. Maraming salamat, Elder Beth and Elder Aida. Elder Beth will also lead us in the church of prayer and the prayer of thanksgiving during the celebration of the sacrament of the Holy Communion. To share with us the word of God is our senior pastor, Pastor Carlos Caloy de la Cruz. Pastor Caloy is the former and the first conference minister of the Lowland Cavite South Manila Conference. And he is at present the chairperson of the examination committee of the LCSMC. Praise God, Pastor Kaloy, for your deep commitment to serve the Lord our God. We express our thanks to Sister Tex Abante for our weekly intercessors devotional guide, and it provides us a short insight for our daily living. You may have a copy of it through the AMC website. Part also of the weekly article we have is our In Focus, which you may also access through EMC website. We are also thankful to all our worship stewards last Wednesday, General Day of Prayer, Elder Golds and Deacon Sincha Castillo, Sister May Anarandia, Elder Johnny Torres, and the ministerial team. We were so blessed by the faith testimony of God's goodness shared to us by Elder Bel Innocencio. 
We encourage everyone to join our midweek prayer service every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And if you have some praises and thanksgiving to share, and if you want to share your faith testimony, just contact any of the pastor of Ellenwood Malati Church, and we will schedule a day for you where you can share it with us. Let us continue to support and uh, pray the other online ministries of the church. We have Sunday School for Children through FB Live. We have Youth Bible Class every Saturday at 2 p.m. Every Saturday at 6 p.m., we have Adult Bible Study. And every last Saturday of the month, we have the Rod Worship, a contemporary Christian way of service led by our young people. At this point, let us uh, greet our birthday celebrants from November 7, uh, which is today to November 13, a happy and a blessed birthday. Their names are posted in the Ellen Wooder and may the good Lord continue to watch over you and protect you. We also greet couples who will celebrate their wedding anniversaries from that same period. We have uh, three couples in our list, November 10, Brother Gamil Gamaliel and Sister Maria Lourdes uh, Gadi. Uh, same uh, date, November 10, Brother Dennis and Sister Cherry Nena Galdo. November 11, Brother Luis and Sister Olive Constantino. Happy wedding anniversary and may your love for each other continue to increase today. And may the good Lord continue to strengthen the tie that binds you together. Again, happy wedding anniversary. Let us continue to support in prayer and, and sharing our blessings that we receive from the Lord the community pantry we do as a church in partnership with the UP Manila College of Medicine. Kindly get in touch with any of the pastors of the church if you want to donate essential food items. For our prayer items, let us lift up to God, our brothers and sisters in Christ who are sick. Of course, we praise God that uh, many are healed already from COVID-19, but we still need to pray for others who are sick other than COVID-19. And uh, there are some who are undergoing some medical treatment and procedures. Let us continue to pray for Sister Flor Sarate Protasio, Sister Belly, Deli Bernardo, Sister Joe Agarado, Pastor Nikki Miranda, Teacher Lina Nazareno, Brother Toto Zarate, Sister Emmy Escune, uh, Sister Zoe Garcia, Elder Sunny Ellsworth, Sister Rachel Marquez, Brother Ber Arguelles, Brother James Auste, who was rushed to uh, the hospital this morning at St. Luke's. Uh, he had a seizure this morning. Let us continue to pray for them and let us always claim the healing that God in his power will provide. We are so thankful to those who remain faithful in the stewardship trust of the church and uh, through your uh, faithful and consistent sharing of your tithes, pledges, and offerings. Your sharing will truly bless others and will make them to praise and uh, worship the Lord our God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us continue to keep safe and stay well. Let us pray for each other and continue to seek God in everything we do. And let us not forget to uh, meet together and encourage each other to stay strong in our faith. Again, a blessed uh, morning to everyone. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their lands. Second Chronicles 7, 14. Let us approach the throne of God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful virtual worship Sunday. Thank you for the gift of life, restoration of our strength, for the joy in our hearts, and for the peace of mind. Thank you for making us feel your presence to the love and care of our family and friends. Thank you that no matter what trials or challenges that may come our way, 
your wisdom and grace sustains us. Lord, cleanse us of all our transgressions and iniquities. Help us to straighten and take the lead in our path. Forgive us, O Lord, for at times we take you for granted. We fail to live according to your will. Make us worthy, O Lord, to, to partake in the communion, the bread and the wine that symbolizes your greatest and steadfast love for us. We pray for our country and its restoration. Rescue us, O Lord, from the wicked leaders and corruptors of the society. In this coming election, enlighten each one of us to choose a leader who is God-fearing, a leader who would uplift the morality and self-worth of the Filipino people. Let your justice prevail for the official who continuously exploit the poor and the weak. We pray for the people who are still hesitant to accept the vaccine that would eventually put an end to this coronavirus, that they would accept it and be cooperative to attain the herd immunity in our country. That sooner the face-to-face -face fellowship meetings and the children will go back to school. We pray for the readiness of the places where, where pilot testing of face-to-face -face classes will be held. We pray for the safety of everyone. We also leave up to you, O Lord, our brothers and sisters who are sick, be it lifestyle diseases or COVID-related. We plead to you to heal them and continue to restore their health. Strengthen our faith in you, O Lord. May your comfort and tight embrace be felt by those who are grieving for the loss of their loved ones. Thank you, Lord, for being with us in good and trying times of our lives. As we continue to worship you, O Lord, give us the strength and courage to be better dressed for your glory. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For Old Testament reading, let us open our Bibles to the first Kings chapter 17, verses 8 to 16. Let us read first King chapter 17, verses 8 to 16 responsively. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Now go to the town of Sarephath, near Sidon, 
and you stay there. I have commanded a widow who lives there to feed you. So Elijah went to Sarah, and as he came to the town gate, he saw a widow gathering firewood. Please bring me a drink of water, he said to her. And as he was going to get it, he called her out, and please bring me some bread too. She answered, by the living Lord your God, I swear that I don't have any bread. All I have is a handful of flour in a bowl and a bit of olive oil in a jar. I came here to gather some firewood to take back home and prepare what little I have for my son and me. That will be our last meal, and then we will starve to death. Don't worry, Elijah said to her. Go on and prepare your meal, but first make a small bread for, from what you have and bring it to me, and then prepare the rest for you and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The bowl will not run out of flour or the jar run out of oil before the day that I, the Lord, send rain. The widow went and did as Elijah had told her, and all of them had enough food for many days. Together, as the Lord had promised through Elijah, the bowl did not run out of flour, nor did the, the jar run out of oil. Our New Testament reading is found in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. As he taught them, he said, Watch out for the teachers of the law, who like to walk around in their long robes and be greeted with respect in marketplace who choose the reserved seats in the synagogues at the best place at feast. They take advantage of, of widows and rob them of their homes, and then make a show of saying long prayers. Their punishment will be all the worse. As Jesus sat near the temple treasury, he watched the people as they dropped in their money. Many rich men dropped in a lot of money. Then a poor widow came along and dropped in two little copper coins worth about a penny. He called his disciples together and said to them, I tell you that this poor widow put more in the offering box than all the others. For the others put in what they had spare of their riches. But she, poor as she is, Put in all she had, she gave all she had to live on. The Lord has already blessed us through the reading of his words. Let us listen to the message of the anthem from the Evangel and Vesper Choir, followed by the preaching of the word by Pastor Caloy de la Cruz.
of peace. Or we'll call them children of the Indeed, let this always be our prayer and our desire. Lead me, Lord. Thank you, Joint Evangel Vesper Choir. And good day. Our scripture lessons for today speaks well as a reminder for all of us that for this month, we will be emphasizing on being good stewards of God's bountiful grace. Allow me to begin with this story. One early Monday morning, the church office phone rang and a voice on the other end asked if he could speak to the good for nothing preacher. The secretary said, who? Then, she gathered herself and said, Sir, if you mean our pastor, you will have to treat him with a little more respect than that and ask for the reverend or the pastor. But certainly you cannot refer to him as the good for nothing preacher. The man said, I understand. I just want to tell him I am dropping by the church office in 30 minutes time. And I want to see him because I have 1 million pesos I was thinking about donating to the church fund. She said, ah, hold on for just a moment, sir. I think the good for nothing preacher has just walked in the door. You know, in our world today, it seems we sometimes become tempted to change our tune when substantial amounts of money are on the line. And the church is not immune and exempted from this. Even in our churches, we sometimes play favorites. Sometimes we are not so aware that it seems that we treat those who have more and give more like they are more important and needed to be treated and responded as up as soon as possible than those whom we know are lesser in this life. Sometimes we even act like we should be recognized more than others for our contributions. And sometimes we want people to know what we have given or what we have done. Oh, brothers and sisters, that is not the way it is supposed to be in God's perspective. Let us look at what Jesus says about, about it in our New Testament account found in Mark chapter 12, verses 38 to 44. Jesus said, 
don't be like the scribes that like to walk around in long robes and that like to be recognized when they are out and about. The ones that like the best seat at church and at parties and at suppers. They devour widows' homes and then make long prayers to cover up their wrongdoing. They will be condemned. Let us pray. Your words, not mine, O oh Lord. And we pray that you bless your words as we listen and bless those who will not only listen, but obey your words every day of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our gospel lesson today, we can find Jesus inside the temple. He was not in, in he was not in front, seated, nor was he at the center. He was at the treasury right outside the place where the people worshipped. It was a chest with a long funnel looking attachment. It was placed on the wall. People would walk by and put their money in. Imagine Jesus sitting there amongst the temple leaders, watching people go by and drop their money in. There was no paper money then, but coins. The rich and the affluent would put in lots of coins and make a lot of noise as the coins are dropped. Then the poor widow comes and drops two coins. Try to imagine. The scribes and the Pharisees probably did not even notice. They were too busy with the wealthy and trying to look important. But Jesus noticed. Well, as we all know, Jesus always notices those on the margins of society. And so he, he told his disciples to look at that poor widow who put in more than anyone else. Everyone else put in a surplus. Everyone else put in leftover money. Everyone else put in what they thought was enough. But she put in all she had. The poor widow had put in all her heart into the box. She gave according to the quantity of her trust and love for God and not according to the quality of her leather purse or wallet or the thickness of her money. How often do we just give God leftovers or just what we think is enough? I know that you all know how hard it is to step out in faith, especially in these critical pandemic times. Don't you think we need to get off the standard figure of giving? Don't you think we should give all we can? I think we should strive to give our very best, even in terms of or an equivalent figure as a symbol of our sincere and true giving to God. And I know you all know why. Yes. God gave his very best for us. He did not have to send his only son. And Jesus did not have to die. He gave us his life so that we might be saved. And we act like we are doing God a favor when we put the biggest currency in the offering plate. When we are in fact blessed by God more than we could ever ask. Or have. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus says, Give, and it, and it shall be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. 
And in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 7, the Apostle Paul says, He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must do what is purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Now, here's the catch. This poor widow came to the temple poor and needy. And she left the same way, but there was something she got which others did not have. God's favor. Oh, how blessed are you when God finds favor in you. And this poor widow did not get it. She did not get richer after. The coins, the two coins she dropped did not double or triple on the way back home. But she got the most and best of all. God's favor. Like the other widow in Sarifat who got God's favor when she received Elijah in her house in the middle of a crisis. The scripture says there was a drought during that time. Imagine no water, no food supply, no oil to use. And here you are welcoming a stranger. And to welcome a stranger during those days means you need to watch him and supply his needs. Elijah was at first just asking for water since he was on a journey on foot. And suffice it to say, since he was welcome, ha, he requested his host to cook for him a piece of bread, even without being sensitive that that time the supply of the widow at home is just good for her and her son. Did the widow lack when she shared her only resources left? In fact, she gained more than enough to last the drought until all is well in the land. So what does this teach us? On the surface, of course, our scripture lessons are saying that the size of the gift is irrelevant. What matters is the spirit in which it is given. That is already understood. You know, I've heard a lot of people teach that what matters isn't the amount you give, but the amount you have left over. But I think there are two deeper lessons here. The first is that a relationship with God is not about an external show, but an internal reality. And secondly, that reality is a trust so deep that you can let go of everything hold, holding you to this age and cling fully to the Lord. Why do I bring this up? Because... If you look at where we've, be, we've just been, Mark is contrasting the religious leaders with this woman and the poor widow of Saripath is going against the rule of the day. Either self-sensitive or be selfless and share. The religious leaders at that time missed the reality that everything is centered on our relationship with God, not our relative importance to our fellow humans. All of their values add up to their character, which was entirely based on how impressive they were to others and how important they felt. They trusted in themselves only. Being in power over others was their most important goal and providing for their own sense of security through lording it over to the less and the least 
and taking everything they could get their hands on in terms of the things this age values. Contrast that with a widow. She had no value at all in this age. In terms of status, she was less than a nobody. She was a woman, poor, and a widow. She had no authority and had nothing in this age to rely on. And that's just where God wanted her and wants us to live. It is not that God wants us to always be on the edge of starvation and homelessness, but when it comes to where we get our security and sense of purpose, do we find it in this age? Or do we realize how bankrupt this age really is and get our value, our purpose, and our security from the relationship with the king of kings? At some point, all of us have to be willing to cash in all of what brings us worth in this age and give our souls and our destiny to the one who is above all things, Jesus, the Son of the living God. And so, brothers and sisters, God looks out for those who will radically trust him amidst the hard situations of the day, even if it is too critical and pandemic, amidst all of the clamor and noise of the temple treasury, God is always there on the watch. He is focused on one small act. Despite all of our attempts to impress God, the thing that does move him is someone who has lost it all in this age but is still willing to give up even what they do have in order to love him and serve him. Both widows place their trust in God and not in this age and circumstances. It is not just being faithful. The call these days is to practice a radical faith, putting our all to the root of the one who really can see us through. As today and every day, remember, God is on the watch. Will he find us faithful? Will he find you faithful? Brothers and sisters, prepare now to participate in the table of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the table of the Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Lord Jesus Christ has spoken to us when he said, 
Come unto me, all who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Dearly beloved, as we draw near to the Lord's Supper to celebrate the Holy Communion of the body and blood of Christ, we remember, we, we are grateful to remember that our Lord Jesus instituted the sacrament to be observed in church and to the ends of the world for the perpetual remembrance of the sacrifice of himself. In his death, the sealing of all benefits thereof through, of, of all believers, their spiritual nourishment and growth in him, their further engagement in and to all duties which they owe to him, and to be a bond and pledge of their union with him and with each other as members of his body. And so through this, let us first pray. We remember, O oh Lord, the covenant you made with your people and with our ancestors in faith. We rejoice that you open your table for the entire human family to experience your love, your salvation, the abundant life you offer. We come at this very moment to remember as well the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lived among us and who revealed to us the mystery of your word. We remember his suffering, death, and resurrection that assured us of life beyond this life. Oh Lord, we ask you to bless this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed in the upper room together with his disciples, he took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, and broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Every time you come together, eat in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed with my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread, and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until the Lord comes. Now, having examined ourselves to become worthy to participate in the Lord's holy meal, I bid you all to come and participate in the table of the Lord. The table of the Lord is now ready. Let us now distribute the bread. The body of Jesus Christ, the bread from heaven. Amen. Let us now distribute the wine. The blood of Jesus Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving together. 
Holy God, with one voice, we offer to you our thankful praise. Rejoice that you are God, maker of heaven and earth, and of the covenant of love, which binds us to, to one another. With the church of all times and places, we lift our voices in thanksgiving. O Lord, strengthen our faith and increase our love for one another. Send us forth into the world, equipped by, our, by your word, empowered by your spirit, and inspired by the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. It is written in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the, in the beauty of holiness. Let us now offer our tithes, pledges, and offerings to God, who is the giver of all good things. Oh, 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 oh,
Let us say our prayer of dedication together. Gracious Lord, you opened your heart to all, to all of us in Jesus Christ and in all the provisions you have, great, you have made for us. You have blessed us in ways that we can easily see and also in ways that we cannot imagine. You will, you will do for us. You have added blessing upon blessing. Help us, O oh Lord, to love you with for, to love with forgiveness, care, and giving as you have loved us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now declare Article 6 of the UCCP Statement of Faith. Together, we believe that the resurrection of Jesus Christ has overcome the power of death and gives assurance of life after death. And we look forward to his coming again in all fullness and glory to make all creation new and to gather all the faithful under God's kingdom. Amen. Wonderful grace of Jesus, greater than all my sin. How shall we have this Christ? Where shall its praise be? Jesus in peace and heaven, all the time. 
and the scorn of my transgressions. Great the power of all my sin and shame. Oh, magnify the precious name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, O Lord God, for making us worthy to stand before you today, to worship you, to sing praises to you, to hear your words both spoken and sung, and even in the stillness of this time. O Lord, as we close this time of worshiping together, may our worship be acceptable before you today. Thank you for the wonderful time that you have shared with us in the Holy Communion. May we continue in your word and use it for the glory of your holy name. Oh, Father God, thank you for touching our lives in ways we cannot explain. You have shared to us what true obedience is and what trusting in you and your words are that even when we are on the verge of lack and nothingness, we can find hope in you. When even things that we don't ask, Lord, you have provided us. And we want to say thank you. Grant us, O oh Lord, to enjoy fellowshipping with each other, even in this kind of means virtually. May we continue to recognize you even in our own daily living. Even in times like this, O oh Lord, we recognize how lives have been transformed and how you have made every situation an opportunity to experience your presence and the blessings of your favor. Oh Lord God, we came into this worship gathering this morning to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Some of us came worshiping you with broken hearts and you have mended them. Others came depressed and you assured them that you are their only hope. Father, you have shown yourself strong in the lives of our brothers and sisters by guiding them and protecting them. Thank you for revealing your love to us today in a very powerful way. Thank you for you are a promise-keeping God, a God who provides our refuge and strength in times of help and trouble. Be with our brothers and sisters who are in pain right now. Comfort them and give them peace which passes all understanding. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are weak today. They who have health issues and need your healing presence. Lord, we especially mention James Auste and our brother Ver Argilius. Today, O oh Lord, have mercy on them and let them feel your touch that in the midst of pain, your reassuring touch may bring them comfort and peace. Oh Lord, we pray for your continuous healing presence to our brothers and sisters who are sick right now at this very moment. Be it either they are in the hospital or they are at home. Visit them, O oh Lord, and touch the part of their body that needs healing the most. And may these, our brothers and sisters, be a living testimony that you have heard and answered our prayers. Lord, manifest your healing to them. Cure them and make them well. We claim your words that in you, nothing is too hard and impossible. As we now end temporarily our worship time together and go out in this world, Lord, help us to make a difference in the world this new week. Let our words and actions be according to your word and will. Help us to practice what we have learned here today. Bless us as we leave this worship gathering and help us to be a blessing to everyone that we meet and interact with. Help us never to forget that you are with us always, watching us through. May we recognize you as the source of our strength. Dismiss us now as you impart to us your benediction. May the, grace of, may the grace and the love of God be with us each day. May God bless each one with this unfailing love. May God continue to uphold each one in the palm of his mighty hand. 
and see us through each day of our lives. The Lord bless each one now and always. Go now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.